the acting industry is very tough to break into. And I had, I had, I would say, one of the most shocking kind of breakouts. Mm. You know, I was virtually unknown, even though that's not true. But, I, you know, I was virtually unknown and broke out with immense success. Mm. So I'm still kind of piecing things together and kind of dealing with not an imposter syndrome, but I wonder if you ever do kind of still count yourself worthy. And I, I do, I try every day, but not because I feel like I deserve to be here, mm. but because I'm becoming more and more aware of God's grace. 702. The upside of failure. Sometimes failure is the foundation of greatest success stories. Wow. Welcome, welcome, welcome for joining us. Thank you very much for coming in. What a dramatic intro for your latest. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. I, I was watching your face when you were listening back to yeah. yourself and you, you would smile a bit and then you would frown a bit. And what were you thinking <laughs> when, you, when you heard back on that? Mm, man, I'm like... Well, firstly, I'm like, okay, that's how it sounds, just pure audio, mm. um, which kind of carries the same intensity as the visuals, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, wow, um, they, we really made a product. Um, and, yeah. and, and this is Dion Mayer's uh, book being made into a film, and I yeah. know that he was, he was involved initially, and then he, he had to go and often do something else. How hard or easy is it getting into a character that's contrived by somebody else? Sure. I mean, often they are, right? Often there's a, there's a writer who, you know, you get a script and it's been written before and been worked generally for years uh, before an actor arrives to play the role. But what I loved about Dion Mayer and um, his involvement in the project that he wrote, he wrote the script as well, the screenplay as well. So he was very much involved in the adaptation of it. Mm. And by virtue of, being, of him being so involved in the adaptation, he was very open to, you know, to creating kind of, because it's a different medium. Mm. So he was very open in, you know, moving it into a different medium and whatever that took, yeah. whether it took away from the book or whether it, you know, it added to, to the film uh, he was very open to that process, and I, I kind of borrowed from that as well. Because that's quite a pressure, isn't it? I mean, people love the book. Yeah. And then to see the movie, I mean, you've got to do it as well, if not better. If not better. And, mm. you know, to kind of have the the author's approval in in the adaptation process, mm. you know, because often maybe a, a studio would come to you and say, we want to adapt your book. And then they pay you, and then they do whatever they got to do to that's right. To change it into a different medium. Mm. But Dion Mayer was involved in doing that. So that kind of gave us all, I, dare I say, permission mm. to, um, to explore the same freedom. So I'm obviously doing quite a bit of reading up about you. I've, I've heard you, seen you, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, I threw that out quite flippantly. That's South Africa's favorite actor. But you certainly do command a, a great following amongst people. But what, I, what really stood out for me yeah. uh, reading about you was just how much you express um, in your messages, WhatsApp or, or you know, uh, social media messages, your love for your wife. And, it's, you know, that's beautiful yeah. <laughs> and rare. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm whipped. <laughs> I'm whipped. Yeah, my, my wife is, is really my best friend. Mm. Um, she has walked this journey with me. We met in drama school uh, 11 years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, we started dating shortly after we met. And we've never been apart since. And we've, we've uh, recently become parents to a beautiful eight-month daughter, eight-month-old daughter. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, did, I, did it make you look at her any differently, your wife? Absolutely. I mean, she's, she went from being my girlfriend to my wife and then to being the mother of my child. Mm. Uh, so there's a, there's a growth that happens in, in, in the relationship and between us, whether it's the relationship itself growing or us growing as individuals within the relationship. But, mm. yeah, absolutely. Um, 
through time, we're, we're learning different sides of ourselves um, through each other, which is such a beautiful thing. And journey. it's not, I mean, you find somebody who's a soul sister brother and you can't just relax, can you? I mean, uh, relationships morph into something else and yeah. you, you've got to keep working at it, right? Yeah, yeah. No, you, you absolutely, you do. We mm. do, we do. But I think we've, 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 we understand each other in a very unique way. Mm. And we have kind of the same ideals about what it takes to build something and yeah, I think our expectations of each other are quite, um, you know, quite chilled. We're like, yeah. and not too much pressure to no, perform we're, for them. We're literally, I would say, we're literally the same, you know, kind of the same thing. We're both actors. We 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 went to the same school at a point, and then mm. we kind of stayed together. So we're, yeah, almost kind of mirror images of each other. So our expectations of each other are quite similar. I would never expect something of her that I can't do, and. Mm. I think vice versa because we're like we're almost the same, <laughs> you know. <laughs> How do you deal with the attention that you get? And um, I mean, you get you know fans who throw themselves at you. I'm sure. I mean, how do you and how does your wife deal with that kind of attention? Sure, I think um, life had humbled me before fame, mm. you know, and I kind of had a, a mature you know, dare I say mature kind of point of view of life um, before I had become, you know, known. Mm. So I kind of, for me, it exists still within a, a professional framework. It still not feels like my job, but I know it's because of my job. You respect it. I respect it. And I know that most times people don't know the real me. Not that anything's wrong with the real me, mm. but, you know, I, I try balance it. I try not let it get to my head. Um, and I try be patient with people because mm. I, I know it takes a lot for someone to walk up to someone and say, hey, I love your work. Yeah. Can I take a photo of you? And in my head, it's like I have space on my phone for an image of you. Yes. You know, and I don't take that for granted. Mm. So, I mean, that's that's such a beautiful thing to hear because it does take courage for, for people to come up. 100%. And, and the fact that they're giving you a compliment is just so beautiful. 100%. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we underestimate that kind yeah, of thing. Uh, everyone wants to hear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I hope other people don't do that. But when I, when I started getting, you know, stopped on the street or in the malls, that's really what I saw it as. I was mm. like, wow, you really stopped what you're doing, mm. had the courage to walk up to me. I mean, it sometimes goes both ways, right? You, yeah. you find the ones that are like really excited and they're, you know. <laughs> and after a bit, you go, okay. <laughs> quite entitled <laughs> to that photo. <laughs> they feel entitled to that photo. Oh. And then you, you find people who would genuinely, um, genuinely just want to tell you how you made them feel and mm. how much they admire your work. And especially with people who, who are so specific to say, mm. I love your work. Mm. I, I love what you do. Mm. And some go as far as thanking me. Mm. I'm like, wow. Um, I've all, obviously, I've never seen acting as a self-serving um, self exercise. Mm. Um, I am aware that I, I act for an audience. I don't take for granted the time. You know, there's so much content out there. So for you to watch me, that's oh, right. I don't take that for granted either. Mm. So I'm like, thank you. I'm, 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 I really, I mean, maybe it's the person I am, but I'm re it really forces me back to a point of gratitude, mm. really. Like I'm always just so grateful of where I was, where I used to come from, you know, being a young kid who wanted to be an actor and then someone stopping you in the middle. I mean, the furthest we've been was... There's two times. God's window in Mpumalanga. Mm. And I was shooting the wife at the time. And I thought, I'm in another province. I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I mean, God's window is kind of like a tourist attraction. It's something there. And I had a mask on. Mm. But the person saw me through the mask. And I'm like, Mkhele, is that you? I'm like, yeah. And, <laughs> uh, and then it stunned me. And then once uh, my wife and I were in Heathrow in London. And... Yeah, someone in London 
was like, you're the guy from Showmax, you know? I was like, yes. <laughs> like, do you get Showmax? I was like, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> My word, Jane Dutton, I can't believe you have South Africa's favorite actor in your studio right now. Um, I've just watched every single piece of um, acting that he's involved in. Uh, a Mind of a Hunter is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, but unfortunately, he's now, I think, on another platform that I cannot access. So, yeah, Netflix, Showmax, Mzansi Magic, wherever he is, we follow him. Thank you so much. Oh, what a beautiful message. I have to say, I'm jealous of myself. Wow. <laughs> How do you feel when you hear something like that? Uh, the first <laughs> thing I go, did you guys pay them? Did you guys pay them? <laughs> Yo, um, yeah, it's, it's humbling. It's really humbling. Because you've got to remember, Jane, I was... Um, acting is not... The acting industry is very tough to break into. And I had... I had, I would say, one of the most shocking kind of breakouts. Mm. You know, I was virtually unknown, even though that's not true. But, I, you know, I was virtually unknown and broke out with immense success. Mm. So I'm still kind of piecing things together and kind of dealing with not an imposter syndrome, but I wonder if you ever do kind of still count yourself worthy. And I, I do. I try every day, but not because I feel like I deserve to be here, mm. but because I'm becoming more and more aware of God's grace, mm. you know, or, or you know, wh wh whatever God you believe in, you know. But that is incredible, isn't it? I mean, you, you wonder when you will reach that point where you go, you know what? I I'm successful. Yeah. I have done it. If yeah. you uh, and what happens when you reach that point? Is it a dangerous point? Is it? I think. I wonder. Mm. I wonder. And I I I don't feel that way. Mm. Um, as much as everyone, um, you know, as much as the reception of the work is of what I do is is great. I've always got more. Mm. I've always got more, and I'm like, well, wait, I'm not done. <laughs> I've got something else. Um, what did you do that was just that, that really backfired? And I mean, I know that you know there was a point where you were living with depression. You were yeah. dealing drugs from the back of your yeah. your car. I mean, that was a bit of a yeah a, a, a bleak time. Yeah, I think so. I, I when uh, acting for me was a. A resolve mm. of 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 I think a lot of things that I was dealing with, trying to be. So, look, I leave high school, um, and I choose to go to go uh, become like a designer, you know. And I sign up to a, a school in 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 Randburg, like a design school. And then it doesn't work out, and then I I do like a, a short course in Bromfontein, and then. The very next year, I go to a university and then I flunk, you know. And then I remember my parents kind of asking me, like, dude, what's your story? <laughs> what do you want to, like, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're tired of paying mm. for you, you know, to kind of pop in and out of institutions. And I call myself a, 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 a grad. A, a gra a, a dropout graduate because <laughs> I've dropped out three times. And if you put it together, that's, that should, I should get a degree for that right? or something, you know? Um, but I, I think I struggled a lot as, as an artist mm. to find my place in the world. And once, once, you, once, you, once you're someone who doesn't know their place in the world, I think the world automatically places you somewhere. Mm. And... Um, yeah, I find my I found myself in in certain spaces, you know, particularly the music scene. I was in, I was a rapper back in the day, um, for drum and, drum and bass DJs, part of the drum and bass scene, which is if people people at home don't know, you know, drum and bass is kind of this uh, rave music, mm. you know. So it was kind of the rave scene. Lots of drums and lots of bass. Lots of drums <laughs> and lots of bass and lots of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, by virtue of just being in that space, you get caught up in a, in, in a bunch of stuff. And mm. um, I remember I was living in Yeovil in the Ponty on the 50th 
51st floor. And I got so depressed and I'd often stare out that window, you know, mm. and like, and Sibs, who was the director of uh, Necktie Youth, he called me and was like, you want to come shoot this film? It's about friends in Joburg and you know, you're going to have this, this role, you know. And initially the, the short film was just like little tableaus of, of kids in Joburg. Mm. And, you know, I was in the scene basically of the film. And he won at Berlinale, which is a film festival in Germany. And he, I think he called me like a, a year later. And he's like, dude, I got the money. We're doing the, the real film, but we've changed the story and you're the lead. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, and I'm pretty much... Clean up? No, mm. I'm still pretty much in the space, right? Mm. I'm still kind of driving my Beetle, selling weed and like, you know, living in Westina or living in Pontia. Like even right now, I'm, I'm like... It escapes me what the hell was going on in my life at that time. But I was an actor. I was trained. I had finished school. And I remember the callback. I think I came back from a party or something. And I drove to like the producer's house in, um, in Parktown North. Mm. And I think I was supposed to be there at 4 o'clock. And I got there like half past 2. Mm. But I passed out. <laughs> And he comes knocking on my window, like, dude, it's 5.30. We thought you weren't coming. So I had passed out since, and, like, and they're like, no, come. You just got to do this one tape, you know, like, they just want to see you. Mm. And I did, I did, you know, the tape. Uh, they, they, they taped me. And then I, I remember him and I walking out and we walked we walk to the park to go sp like smoke a joint or whatever. And he was like, and I was telling him, I was like, dude, if this doesn't work out for me, like, it's not looking good, dude, mm. you know? And crazy enough, same with him. He was like, no, like, if this doesn't work out for me, you know? And I think Sibs and I had a great friendship back, back then because we really connected at a rock bottom type of level. Mm. And that's why I say um, acting kind of found me and saved me. So we shoot the film, you paid like 10,000 Rand, right? We shoot the film. Three, like a year later, I get a message that you've been nominated best actor in uh, Tribeca, New York. So the complete extreme isn't it right i'm still pretty much mm. same place yeah mm. same place so i'm like cool i don't have money like nah they these things they pay for you don't worry go i'm in new york i'm like wow is that robert de niro is that that active scene on that show yeah. and you're kind of in the midst of this stuff and then i think it, that's really where the penny dropped for me to be like mm. There's something here mm. and not because, oh, you can make a, you know, you can be around all these people or, you know, it's so nice, but it's almost like this thing literally took you out of like a toxic space mm. and put you amongst really cool and nice people. And, and showed you what, what is there, what's attainable, what you could be. What you could be. How lucky were you, right, to have been afforded that opportunity? I count myself lucky. But skill must have played a role there too. <laughs> I, hope <so. laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Um, we didn't win, but I mean, I, I won in the bigger in, in the bigger picture. The the award was one thing, but I mean, like, I really took, I got what I what what I needed in New York at that time. It, it sounds like a life win to me. Good to have you with us. Bonko Causa's in the studio with me and Maps has been waiting on the phone for a while. Maps, sorry for the wait. Go ahead. Uh, how are you, ma'am? Very good, and you? Good, good. Uh, Mr. Causa, how are you? I'm good, and you, sir? Uh, Mr. Causa, I heard you said acting saved you. Yes, sir. Uh, but there's actually one scene that you did uh, on The Wife. Um, you and your... Well, like um, Kale and one of his brothers were fighting at home. And then uh, this other guy, I think it was in Pendula, I don't remember his name. He pointed a gun at you. And then he said, Hey, Wena, Shaya. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. Guess what? 
exactly on the 3rd of December 2022, I had somebody trying to hi, like hijack me. Oh, uh, and, and they had a real gun point to me, a man, like a nine millimeter. And your access. Uh, hello? Sorry, Maps, hello? it's not a great line. Uh, so, so what happened, Maps? So, so this guy was trying to hijack me and he pointed a real gun at me. Then, I, like, I, I, I just walked out of the car and I went to him and I said, You went out, shy up. And he became scared. He, like, he literally left the scene. He ran away from the scene. So, your, your, your actual scene helped me, man. It gave oh, me courage. Man. I just went straight to that gun. I looked at it, like, like, I looked into the gun and I told the gun, like, like uh, uh, I told the guy, they went out, shy up, and he ran away. So, so yeah, but thank you, thank you for that team. And uh, you're an awesome customer, man. You Yo. are, you are, yeah, thank and you. I'm crazy so about you, bro. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Maps. Thank you yeah. so much, man. Okay, thank uh, you for that, Maps. Walter, you've also been standing by. Tell us what you're thinking, Walter. Hey, hey, Jay, go ahead. Hey, hello, Bonko. I, I how's, mean, how's it, my brother? How are you? I'm good. I love your work, man. I love your work. I Thank mean, so actually, much. I mean, I, I called the producer, you know, I mean, uh, mine was just to find out who's this guy. I mean, yeah. then they said, this this is Bonko. Who's Bonko? And <laughs> I realized that she told me, I mean, you, you, you did some work with the wife mm-hmm. and, and, and the, the one last chick I watched, the one with Connie and the, the other guys. Heart of the Hunter. La- yeah, I, I love your work, man. Thank you so but much. But then my, my, mine is more on the life in general. I yeah. mean, I'm Berkeley, man. I'm, I'm, I'm basically down, you know. Yeah. And my surrounding two friends, you know. Yeah. Uh, everyone is just going through, 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 through life, you know. Yeah. Uh, I can't say shit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with Berkeley, man. I mean, you said you were down. I just want to know how did you pull yourself, man? I mean, I could hear from your voice, but you, 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 you were down. You were yeah. down. Yeah. And I mean, just what I know, man, we, we, we're battling, man. 42, 50s with battling, all of us, man. My yeah. son, my what, friend. What, what was tell. your yeah. trick to pulling yourself out? I mean, you obviously had that lucky moment, that yeah. talented moment, but what, when you feel down, what do, you, what do you do? I pray. I really do. I pray. Um, you know, I've been, I've, I, that's why I say I am lucky. I'm fortunate to have amazing parents. Like my mom and my dad are, in my world, two of the most amazing people in the world. Um, but that's that's not to say, you know, what advice, you know. So can you draw on them? Can you? I do, mm. absolutely. My dad is um, probably the most humble, smartest, um, selfless people I've ever met. And, you know, my mom is the kindest, sweetest, selfless person. And they, they're just so compatible. Mm. And I always say my mom reminds me of who I am and my dad reminds me who, I've, who I want to be. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Like... And it's good to have that constant reminder, right? You look at yeah. them and go, okay, this this works. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm blessed. But I mean, I just want to answer the gentleman. Mm. Um, I feel like sometimes we, you know, struggling is so, it's, it's, it's so um, disabling, right? And I think, I, f- I feel maybe because I am an artist, mm. I, f- I made the pain the art. And I, maybe my answer is make art. Yeah. Try and make some art and see how you feel. So like, you transfer that pain into the work that you do. Like I can't escape who I am. I mean, my parents are listening right now. Mm. So... I, I, I get to a crossroad where I'm like, am I going to be fully myself with all my flaws or, or am I going to choose to be selective of who I am and be schizophrenic and then I'm, 
I'm, and look at me, like I'm on the radio. This is one of the biggest stations in the country, in the world. So am I going to hide a part of myself mm. or am I going to be myself completely? If I choose the latter, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to be honest with myself and with everyone else. But is there something you hide from yourself that you feel that you, that you should get out, that, that you'd be better for it? Not anymore. Not anymore especially after what we just spoke about. Mm. Not anymore. At, at that time, yeah, it was. But I think um, God gave me the, the gift and the curse. It was two sides of a coin. I wouldn't be here if I didn't go through that. And I can't be here without that being public. Yeah. But for me, it's a relief mm. because I'm like, well, that's me. You know? Is it also, do you sometimes look back and think this is a reminder of where you could be if you let things go? I mean, I should imagine your mom and dad, I just want to commend them. I mean, you can tell that you're genuine, right? You can yeah. feel it. Right. So they've done a good job. But Thank do you, you think those sort of reminders are important that you think, well, it's a quick journey back? Yeah. Look, I, I don't know about back because, you know, in... in um, like things can change. Mm. And it's also the irony of like having to embrace change that makes that makes it that much more fun, you know? Mm. Because I understand that everything is fleeting. Mm. We won't be here forever. This might not last forever. So when you're in that position, you're like, what do I do? Mm. Let me just be grateful. Yeah. Let me just make the most of everything. Let me be honest with everyone. You know, any moment could be the last moment. So I'm like, ah, am I going to end it all with secrets in my heart or with resentment in my heart? Or will I, you know, if my time comes, everyone will know who he was in his old completeness, right? So that's what I chose to do. And I chose to use my pain in my work to let it out. Mm. And it goes even further where you get on the radio and Jane brings it up. And, you, and uh, I'm never to a point where like, now nah, I'm getting nervous. I'm like, oh, Jane, why are you asking? Mm. I'm just like, yeah, let it out. Let but isn't it lovely when you've got nothing to hide? I think so. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. Um, and I, I hope, like, just like the gentleman who was on the, on the phone, I can be of, of some, like my honesty can be of some service. Mm. But I also understand that my honesty is functional. I do have kind of a function with honesty. Like my job is to be honest. Not to say I would ever be a dishonest person, but like I really have to be in that space. Either, otherwise, I don't think people would connect with the work, with my work as, as much as they do. It's amazing what people can see on a screen, right? And yeah. we're just going to take a little spot break <laughs> now. And then, Phil, we're going to speak to you. 702 Online has moved to primemediaplus.com. We've upgraded your online and mobile experience. It's sleeker, fresher than ever, high quality and faster streaming. 24-7. Get upgraded and get involved. Hit primemediaplus.com or download the app from your app store. Are you looking at how you can help others during a difficult time? Join the fight against blood cancer and blood disorders by donating to DKMS Africa. DKMS Africa helps blood cancer and blood disorders patients to get matching stem cell donors, thereby giving them a second chance to life. One way in which you can get involved is by helping to lessen the financial burden patients face while getting through to transplant. Make a donation towards DKMS Africa at dkms-africa.org and help give a blood cancer patient a second chance at life. Every rand counts in the fight against cancer. Before they buy your car, be really sure. Before they push too far, be really be really sure, be really sure. Before you drive in and think what might have been. Before they buy your car, be really sure. Be really 
Get to the new Wheelie Mega Store in Midstream and choose from thousands of cars at wholesale prices. Wheelie.co.za, SA's most trusted place to buy, sell or trade your car. We believe insurance should be as easy as... Pie, Napple. <laughs> Underwritten by All Martin Insure Limited, a licensed non life insurer and authorized FSP. The Johannesburg World Festival of Food and Drink is returning to Empress Palace. Look forward to a diversity of international street food and music. Showcase your foodie business at our What's Trending Food Market. Categories include coffee and chocolate culture, home dining, plant based foods, waterless food preparation, and more. To showcase your business or for more vendor information, email Rita at imagineeringcorp.co.za. Brought to you in partnership with Prime Media. 702. The upside of failure. Proof that a setback can lead to a step forward. Hi, Jane. Hi, Bonko. Oh, Jane, what a talent you have there. What a talent you have there. He is phenomenal. I just watched um, the Red Ink on Show Max and it was out of this world. How he managed to switch roles from one role to another. It was amazing to watch. Bonko, I just wanna say to you, keep up the good work. Um, we love you and thank you for gracing our screens with such talent. Um, you know what, you are amazing. And thank you, Mili here from Rodiport. So speaking to Bonko Koza and uh, you are a serial killer in that. Yeah. Right? Yay. Did you hold on to any of those elements that you learned? Any of those personality? The, the, <laughs> well, the serial killer traits? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't. Um, I do a lot of prep, so I try that by the time we're shooting, you know, it can, it can really be specific and spare myself of. So I, what I do, I take on the traits before we shoot mm. so that when we're shooting, I know where to kind of place them. But no, no, um, it, yeah, no, uh. no, I could go home. I mean, my daughter was born a month, I think a month before. No, no, no. My daughter was born when I got confirmed on the day, crazy, right? Mm. On the day I was born, um, on the day my daughter was born at the hospital, yes. I got the call that you're going to go be a serial killer. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no. I, and looking at something of such... Innocence yeah. and beauty, right? And Man. This, the monster on the other side. Let's bring in Phil. He's been holding on. Hi, Phil. Hi, this is Jane. And, and thanks to your learned friend there. You know, the, the, his story is but a, 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 an inspiration to others. You know, the one thing that I've learned is that you know, the key to success is failure. Yeah. As long as you learn from that particular f failure, so that you could, your life can become a learning laboratory to others in future. That in life you, 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 you fall seven times, but like the old Chinese uh, uh, saying, you fall seven times, but you stand up eight. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when we were raised up as young children, our parents only exposed us to opportunities of success and never exposed us to opportunities of failure. Yet, uh, which is yet, when we reached the adult life, uh, we, were, we were raised completely out of kilter of what the adult life requires, where there's success, where there's failure, where there's everything. So I think what having opened up and taught us and taught the future generation that in life you need to set realistic and achievable goals. But uh, when, when, they are not, when you are not, can't achieve them, don't be demotivated. Stand up and, and be ready to learn out of your mistakes so that you can go through the, the, the life until such time that you, you experience what is called the serendipity yeah. in your life. Yeah. Through prayer, through everything, you'll meet your Jesus loves me moment. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Phil. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> he is, uh, I wonder if he meant to say serenity. All right. Um, I mean, I understand serendipity, yeah, mm -hmm. but I was thinking when we, I think he was trying to say seren serenity. Phil, I don't know. Um, yeah, we, we, you can let me know. But there's, there's, a, there's a serenity prayer mm. that says, um, 
grant me god grant me the um grant me the the wisdom to understand what i Yes, I, I, yeah, I, need to, I, 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 I yeah, it's coming to me. <laughs> but it's such a beautiful pr- is prayer. It the twelve step. I think they, that that's what the twelve steps and all of that is based around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, give me grant the me courage the, to change the things you can. The um, the confidence or the uh, yeah. Anyway, but that, you know what I mean. Yes, that one. But all, um, and the wisdom to know the difference, yes. right? Uh, you guys can Google it. It's the Serenity Prayer. But like, uh, I love it because it's like really three traits that you're really asking God for. Um, the courage to change the things you can. Um, and, the w- and the thing is the wisdom to accept the things you can't change. And to know the difference. And then to know the difference. Mm. And you're like, ah, oh, that really simplifies life, right? Mm. Um, so yeah, yeah. Serenity, peace, content. Yeah. And as I said earlier, like life humbled me way before, yes. uh, you know, uh, fame or whatever. So it's, Okay, here we go. Yeah. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you, Peter. Thank <laughs> you, Peter. So it's, it's, it's uh, what's the first one? Uh, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The serenity to accept the things you cannot change, mm. which is inevitable, right? Yeah. Like, yes, and, uh, and why bang your head against something that's yeah, yeah. not going to change? You like can't change Like when you're stuck it. in traffic as well, yeah, yeah. isn't it? You go, well, I right. can scream and shout or just yeah. chill. And then the courage mm-hmm. to actually do something when you're capable to not be held back by mm. your own fears, your anxieties or whatever, but also just the wisdom to know, can I change this? Mm. Can I change that? And you know, for me, I think crazy enough, they both speak to me as a person. Mm. There are things that I can't change about myself, but there are things that I certainly can. Yes. You know. And it's important to keep working on ourselves, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do you think you have to be in a position to be able to see those problems? Do you, do you think it has to come from somebody else? Does somebody go, mm, listen, that's not really working for me at the moment? I think um, a, a good support, uh, a good supportive environment is, is great. Mm. Um, yeah, that's why I, mean, I love my wife. My wife is, 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 my, is my support oh, and right. she's kind of my mirror. I love how you love your wife. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, I mean, you yeah, know, you're SAFTA award winning. Yeah. You, I mean, you've just been super successful. And then you did this Headspace, which is a locally produced oh, yeah. animated film. But yeah. we don't see you. It's, it's all your voice. Yeah. W- was that a completely different vibe? Because it's just, you have to paint a picture of this character through just your voice. Yeah. Um, it was fun. It was fun. I, I, I treated it like a normal role. Mm. Um, more theater than screen, yeah, because it's kind of a little theatrical, quite big. Um, big in the sense of like, yeah, it's quite theatrical, so yeah, that was really fun. And it, it was, you know, I, when I left the wife after season two, I, I went on a hiatus, mm. and part of that hiatus was like really exploring my other stuff, which is my voice. Now I have. I'm, I'm a voiceover artist. I'm really. I'm, I'm waiting for Peter to play my radio ad. I don't know which. I was, when I walked in, there, I was like, "Where's my spot? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's me. Come on, it's me." <laughs> um, yeah, but I, um, some might know or not know. Like, yeah, I, I do voiceovers as well. And by God's grace, I was, you know, I had enough voiceover work to kind of chill out from acting from a bit for a bit. And yeah, I did a Disney show as well. Um, Kia and the Komojo Heroes. So animation last year was quite fun. Mm. Um, yeah, a little different. I think it helped me also get out of like a space that I was in during that time. You know, mm. I mean, Kale was, was you know, kind of a crazy, crazy character. So it was like very light, fun for the kids, you know. No keep, makeup. No makeup. <laughs> keep it playful. And, you know, you yeah, so that was fun. I mean, before you came in, uh, there's a big picture of you. You probably noticed as you walked yeah. in. And uh, we were just saying what makes you so wonderful to watch is that you really believe and i know that obviously duh you know as an actor you've got to become that person yeah. but you really get into it i mean you can you you morph so beautifully into that role thank you how do you get there i mean what what's the what is the trick i think it's 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 my history of i think my imagination has been trained outside of acting mm. so that when it finally do, when it finally does acting I really draw from those things. I started out as an artist. You know, I went to the National School of Arts. 
I was a painter, mm. you know, you we used to draw and paint and then when I matriculated, that was kind of I was I was a visual guy. So when I finally got into acting, I mean in parallel I was kind of like the class clown and like, mm. you know, I know the Lion King word for word type of type of type of kid. As you said, you're a Leo, you like to be yeah. We, Watched. we like the attention. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if I can try quantify my acting, um, yeah, it's a it's just a strong imagination. Mm. Yeah, I mean, kids. You, if a kid says he's the doctor and he's the mo- and she's the mother, and you watch kids playing, you know, house or you know, back in when we were young, we, we called it Uglalisa, You know, then I, I'm the dad. Then there's a sister, then there's, you know, we're a family or whatever. Mm. And you you can't convince them otherwise. No. No, you can't. And if a kid's got a plane in their hand or a toy in their, I mean, also we used to have, we, we grew up, not poor, but like we grew up, I, I was born in Soweto and I remember playing with a brick, mm. but to me it was a car and yeah. I would drive it around it. You know, drive Isn't it around. That beautiful, that yeah. creativity, and, and and you'll see it with your kid. That, that, that yeah. imagination is the just imagination. Like, oh. Yeah, and how we stamp it out actually, instead of letting it flourish. <sighs> I hope I don't do that to her because that's what made Daddy. That's what, that's what put Daddy on seven hundred two. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remind you of that. Yeah. Do you have a final closing thought of failure and what it means in one's bigger life, whether it's your career, or yeah. your happiness um i think for me pff, failure if you really look at my dna of my career there's more failures than wins i mean it's currently one big win so if i were ever to recommend a remedy it was is to just keep failing it sounds very contradictory but keep failing because when you keep failing it means you keep trying mm. you know You're not being complacent you only need to win once you only need to win once. I mean, people don't know that I audition nine times and only get one. So you only need one, the wife. You don't need to have them all. You just need one, the wife, one red ink, one heart of the hunter to really make a difference. So well, thank you for keep coming failing in, forward. Because, uh, keep, keep failing. <laughs> and uh, we love your failures and we love your successes. Thank you. And, and thank you. Thank you, Jane. 702 The upside of failure Sometimes failure is the foundation of greatest success stories